Okay, 12.2, determining payroll and tax withholding. Um, we're going to demonstrate the process for determining federal income tax withholdings. We're going to demonstrate the process for calculating Social Security and Medicare taxes, and then explain the benefit of funding medical and retirement plans with pre-tax contributions. Um, first of all, payroll taxes. Taxes based on the payroll of a business are called payroll taxes. It's very important that accurate and detailed payroll records must be maintained. Any errors in payroll records could cause incorrect payroll tax payments. Government agencies could assess penalties for failure to pay correct payroll taxes when they are due. And then payroll taxes withheld represent liabilities for the employer until payments are made to their respective government agencies. Pause there for a second. A uh, company hires workers. They pay those workers, you know, a certain wage or salary. And then companies are required to withhold money from the employees as taxes and then pay it to the government. When the employers withhold this money, in their books, it's considered a liability. They're holding this money and they're just holding on to it until it's due to the government. Um, that's why it represents a liability for the employer until they pay their respective government agencies. A deduction from total earnings for each person legally supported by a taxpayer, including the employee, is called a withholding allowance. Um, if you have a part-time job or you've ever had a part-time job, you've had to fill out a W-2 or a W-4 form, which is an employee's withholding allowance. So as an employee, you um, fill this out so that the company can guess how much to withhold from, their, from your pay. Um, it's just a guess until you actually file taxes, but when you fill out this um, withholding allowance certificate called the W-4 form, um, you fill this out saying, you know, I'm single or I'm a family of four. And right here it says the larger the number of allowances, which are dependents, which are people in your family, the larger number claimed, the smaller amount of money that your company is going to withhold. Um, so you're single, you just have a single dependent, they're going to hold more money. If you have more dependents or a larger family, they're going to withhold less money. Some employees are exempt of withholdings, such as low-income or part-time employees. They may not, the company may not withhold any money from them. Continuing on, any amount withheld from an employee, employee's gross earnings is called a payroll deduction. Examples of payroll deductions are federal income tax, retirement plan contributions, health care savings plans, charitable contributions. It's all going to get withheld from your pay. Here's an example of the employee withholding certificate, the W-4 form. Um, so you fill out a W-2 form and then, oh no, you fill out a W-4 form, sorry, I don't know why it's typed, but um, you fill your name, your social security number, that's how they track you, your address, um, total number of allowances you are claiming from a worksheet right here it says is four, so this is a family of four. Um, John probably has a wife and three kids. And then you can also claim additional money um, to be withheld you sign it and date it. Here it says I claim an exemption from withholding and I certify I meet both of the following conditions for exemption. Last year I had a right to a refund all federal income tax withheld because I had no tax liability and this year I expect a refund on all federal tax withheld because I expect to have no tax liability. Usually that's for low income if they're not making a ton of money. Um, their annual salary is too low to pay income tax. So you would fill that out. Oh, goodness. There we go. Um, uh, here we have an employee income tax withholding sheet. So the wages are at least this much, but less than this much. Um, oops. So these are single person, semi-monthly semi payroll period for wages paid through December. An example. Another example for married person semi-monthly payroll period, um, if the wages are at least 
you know, here we have $1,460 semi-monthly, um, but less than $1,480, so in between these two. And you have four people, that's what you're holding. They're going to um, withhold $29 per pay period from your pay. And you see how the more um, deductions, the smaller the amount that gets withheld. Okay, if it were a single person, you just have one deduction, they would withhold more money. There we go. All right, employee social security and Medicare tax. FICA, a federal tax paid for old age survivors and disability insurance is called social security tax. A federal tax paid for hospital insurance is called Medicare tax. Social Security and Medicare are paid by are paid by both employees and employers, the same amount for each. We pay it and they pay it. Self-employed employees must pay both of these taxes themselves. Ouch. The total gross earnings um, year to date for an employee is called the accumulated earnings. The maximum amount of earnings on which a tax is calculated is called a tax base. Um, when the amount of accumulated earnings equals the tax base, no additional taxes must be paid. Congress sets the tax base and the tax rates for Social Security tax. An act of Congress can change the tax base and tax rate at any time. The Social Security tax rate and base used in this text are 6.2% of earnings up to a maximum of $106,800 in each calendar year. Um, that was a little blurb on tax base. <clears throat> and we talked about that. Medicare tax does not have a tax base. Voluntary deductions from earnings. Um, a retirement savings plan approved by the Internal Revenue Service that provides individuals with a tax benefit is called a qualified retirement plan. Um, for most of you, it would be called a 401k for your parents. If it's a um, nonprofit organization, it would be a 503b. But a 401k is a qualified retirement plan sponsored by an employer. Employee contributions to a 401k reduce the amount of income that is taxed. It is a pre-tax contribution. So money in account, money in the account is taxed when it's withdrawn. So picture this. You're an employee. You make so much money per um, semi-monthly, monthly, however often you get paid. When you put money into your retirement savings plan, it reduces the amount of money that the government is going to tax you on. Um, so that money gets taken out of your pay, put into a savings plan, and it has not been taxed yet. So that money sits there until you retire, and it, ta it gets taxed when you withdraw it, when you use it. Um, a lot of employers, as a benefit, match their employees' contributions. So say you put in 2% of your pay, they're going to match that 2% and give you some more money because it's a benefit um, to you working for them. Um, as an aside, like, as soon as you start working, start putting in your 401k, especially if your employer is matching because it's free money. An individual retirement account, an IRA, is a qualified retirement plan that provides most individuals with a deferred federal income tax benefit. A Roth um, IRA is a qualified retirement plan that allows tax-free withdrawals from the account. So on a Roth IRA, you pay taxes on the money first, and then um, it goes into the savings plan, and then when you withdraw it, you don't pay taxes again. Benefit on pre-tax contributions can be significant. Take advantage of lowering the amount of earnings the government can tax you on. Audit your understanding. Where does an employer get the information used to determine the amount of federal income tax withdrawal withhold from employees' earnings? Um, your form W-4. You fill it out when you start working for a company. Employee federal income tax withholdings are based on what two factors? Your marital status and the number of withholding allowances. Does the employer or employee pay Social Security tax and Medicare tax? 
both. They both do. And if you're self-employed, you pay them both. What is the difference in tax impact of contributions made between a 401k, an IRA, and a Roth IRA? Remember this one? It reduces the amount of money that you get taxed. You um, put it into a savings before they tax it. So when you withdraw it from the account, then you get taxed. Um, an IRA, are and that's the same, sorry, both of these, the 401k and the IRA, are deducted from earnings before payroll taxes are calculated. The Roth, they're deducted from earnings after payroll taxes are calculated. So you pay taxes on money that you put into a Roth account. But then when you take it out of the Roth account, you don't pay taxes again. Are withdrawals from a 401k, an IRA, and a Roth IRA subject to income tax? Well, we just answered that. Withdrawals from the 401k and the IRA are subject to income taxes. Withdrawals from the Roth are tax-free. Okay, 401k and IRA, um, they're subject, subject to income taxes because they went into the savings account before you pay taxes on them. The Roth is not subject to taxes because you paid taxes on it before you put it in. So you'll never have to pay, pay taxes on things twice. And that's it.